Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question house robber. All right. So in this question, uh, we're a professional robber planning to rob houses along a certain street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint stopping you from robbing all of them is that adjacent houses have security systems connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into at the same night. And obviously, you don't want to get caught. So given a list of non-negative integers representing the amount of money each house has, determine the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. All right, so how can we actually go about this question? So let's take a quick example. So over here, we have this over here. We have one, two, three, and one. And what that means is that, uh, let's say the first house has $1. The second house has two dollars, third house has three dollars, fourth house has one dollar, which we can rob. Now the problem is, if we rob this house over here, that means that we won't be able to rob the house next to it, the adjacent house, so we won't be able to rob this house. Similarly, if we rob the house number three, we won't be able to ro rob house number one, and so on and so forth. All right, so in this case, let's see what they did. So what they did is they first robbed house one, and then they robbed this house over here, getting us a total of $4. And that also abides by all of the rules, which is one and three are not adjacent to each other. So we are not going to get caught by the police. So this is a basic dynamic program in question. And let's just see how this all plays into each other. Okay, so over here, let's just start off with the base cases. So let's say that we have zero houses, okay? So over here, let me show. so over here, we're just gonna have our nums array. And in the beginning, it's just gonna be an empty list. So in that case, how much money can we rob? And the answer to that is when we have zero houses, you can uh, rob zero dollars, right? There's nothing you can rob, there's nothing to rob. Now let's say there is one house and that house has $3 in it. So whether you like it or not, you are going to rob how much ever that is. So in this case, that's $3. So when you have one house, you're gonna just rob how much ever that amount is. Now, let's say we have two houses, one house containing $1 and one with $2. Which one do you choose? And you can only choose one because if you choose both of them, the police is going to end up getting alerted. So what are you going to choose? Well, you're always going to choose the maximum between these two numbers. So in this case, the maximum is the number two. So we're going to choose the maximum, which is two. So these three over here are kind of the base cases on top of which we're going to build up our logic. So now let's say we have three houses. So uh, we have one house here, one house here, and one house here. So let's look at the possible combinations. So one of our possible combinations is that we can rob this house and this house without alerting the police, or we can only rob this house. So how, are we, how do we know which house to rob? And to find that out, we're gonna be using dynamic programming. So let's just fill this up with some random values. So let's put this as, one three one obviously this option is going to give us the maximum value but let's see how we can get to that so what we're going to do is we're going to have an array over here which is just going to be completely empty so three empty spots and what we're going to do is we're going to start filling this array up and what each of these positions means is the maximum amount we can rob on let's say on this house so the, what is the maximum amount we can rob when we're at house one and the answer to that is when we're at house one, the maximum we can rob is this over here. So currently the maximum we can rob given only house one is one dollar, $1, right? So now let's say we go to house two. What is the maximum we can rob at our second attempt? Instead of saying house two, at our second attempt, what is the maximum amount we can rob? And the answer to that is the value three or the value one. We can only choose either one. So if we actually robbed this over here, we wouldn't be able to rob this value here since we can't rob adjacent houses. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're, just, we're gonna choose the maximum between these two values, right? So similar to this case over here, we're doing the same thing. So in this case, the maximum is the value three. So we're going to end up choosing three. Okay, so now we go on to our third attempt. Uh, and now over here, we, we can rob the house over here. But if we do rob that house, we're going to not be able to cash out on the value three. 
So what we're going to do over here is the same step. Again, we're going to choose the maximum between this value and this value. And what is the maximum? Well, the maximum is uh, 3, right? But just for the sake of this question, let's just change it up. And let's say that this value over here had a value of 4. So what are we going to end up choosing? Well, in this case, we're actually going to end up choosing 4. So this would actually consist of 4. But um, remember that each step that we're going, we're calculating what is the maximum amount we can rob. And the answer to that is not 4. 4 is how much we get by robbing this one house. But what is our cumulative amount? And to get that cumulative amount, we're going to go to 4. We're going to go back two houses. So currently we're over here. We want to go back two houses, so one and two, and we're going to add whatever this amount is to whatever we rob over here. So this over here is going to end up giving us four plus one with a value of five. So this means that the maximum amount we can rob is the value five. So all we're doing is we're cumulatively finding the maximum number we can rob. And the reason we added the value one is because we want to consider the previous houses we robbed. And the reason we did not add the value of 3, so when we had this case of 1, 3, and 1, why didn't we add 1 in that case? And the answer to that is because if we added 1, we would have adjacent houses. So when we're choosing the previous house, which in this case is the value 3, then in that case we're not going to be adding anything to it because we already have the maximum cumulative sum. So hopefully that makes sense and what we're going to do now is we're going to go over two solutions. So one is going to be uh, the more step-by-step -step approach. And the second solution is going to be using the same concepts, but a lot faster. All right, so let's take a quick look at this. All right, so let's just go step-by-step. -step. So first we're going to check if we actually have any houses to rob. So if not nums, and in that case, that means we have an empty list. And in that case, we're just going to end up returning zero since we can't rob anything. Now over here, we're going to check if the length of nums is equal to 1, then in that case, we're just going to return the value we have. And if the length of nums is equal to 2, then we're going to take the maximum between uh, the two values we have. So instead of doing two different if statements, we can just do that in 1. So if the length of nums is equal to or less than the value of 2, so in this case, 1 or 2, since we already count, uh, accounted for 0, then in that case, we're just going to return the maximum in our nums list. So that accounts for that case. And now if we get past of this if loop, that means, sorry, now if we get past this if statement, that means that we have a minimum of three houses to rob uh, at the very least. And over here, we're going to define our dynamic programming array. And this is just where we're storing the cumulative sum of the maximum amount of money we can steal. All right, so what is this array going to consist of? So we're just going to uh, give it a value of zero or you could give it none. I think both of them should work. And it's going to have a length of how much ever, uh, how, how many ever houses we have. So it's going to be zero multiplied the length of nums. So we're just defining our array over here. All right. So after this, we're going to initialize a few things. So we want to initialize the zeroth element and the zeroth element is just going to stay the same. So in the beginning, uh, we're always going to rob the first house since that is the maximum value. So in this case, that's just going to go to nums and whatever the zeroth element is. Same thing. And similarly, we're also going to define whatever the whatever is going to be at the first element. And the value of the first element is going to be the maximum between nums zero and nums uh, one. So we're taking the maximum between the zeroth index and the first index, since we can only uh, rob either one of those. And now that we have those two defined, we can build up on this using a for loop. So what we can do is we can do for x in range. So where are we going to start from? So we already accounted for 0 and 1. So we're going to start off from the value 2. So we're going to start at 2 and we're going to go all the way up to the length of num. So that's just all the way until the ending. All right. So over here, we're going to go to dpx, right? And this is going to be the maximum. So what are the two options we have? So the first option is a pretty simple one is choosing the one right behind us, right? Right before us, the house we just robbed. So in that case, that's just going to be dp x minus one. And uh, we're going to dp since we have a cumulative sum over there. So that we either have that option or the other option we have is to rob this house. And if we rob this house, 
what is the uh, amount of money we're going to get? So the amount of money we get by robbing the current house is nums x. And we want to add this to our cumulative sum. So to do that, we're going to go to dp, and then we're going to go to x minus 2, since we're going two houses prior. And that's it. So at the very ending, we're going to return whatever the value of the very last element is. So dp negative 1 gives us the last element. And if you submit this, it should work. Now, the only problem with the solution is the, so it's accepted. Okay, so the only problem is the fact that uh, we're taking up a lot of extra storage, um, which is not really necessary. So instead of using a dynamic programming array, what we're going to do is we're just going to store these values inside of variables. And at the ending, we're just going to return uh, the current value that we're holding. So let's just look at that solution real quick. All right, so this is going to be our second solution. And uh, the only difference is that it's using the same steps. It's just a lot faster and we're not using an array to store our values. Instead, we're doing that with variables. So we're going to start off by defining our previous uh, element uh, value and the current value, both of which are going to start off at zero. And then we're going to iterate through all of our numbers. And temp, uh, so it's going to be a temporary va variable, which is going to hold the value of the previous element. And over here, we're going to make the previous element the value of our current element. And our current element is also going to change to the maximum between num plus temp or the previous value. And this is the same as doing the steps that we did earlier, like nums x plus uh, dp x minus 2, right? So it's the same step as that. Uh, and that's all we're doing. And this is just a lot easier and a lot faster. And at the ending of this for loop, we're just going to end up returning our current value. And if you submit this, this should also work. All right, so that should be it for the video. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.